This week's story is sponsored by Audible. Please visit audiblepodcast.com forward slash story noi for your free audiobook download. The Wicked Prince by Hans Christian Andersen. Hello, this is Natasha, and I'm dropping by with a story by Hans Christian Andersen called The Wicked Prince. Bertie says that this is a story about something called hubris, which is when somebody's extremely arrogant, thinks that they can do anything they like, and just goes way, way too far. Bertie says that usually people like that come to a bad end. In this case, the person who suffered from hubris was the wicked prince. But before the story, I'd just like to ask you a question. Do you like dogs? Of course you do. And in that case, I think you will enjoy an audiobook from our sponsor, Audible, called Tango, The Tale of an Island Dog by Eileen Bayer. It's about a pampered terrier from New York who is washed up on a tropical island and has to find his way home again. To buy this book, just go to audiblepodcast.com forward slash story nori. That's audiblepodcast.com forward slash story nori. Or follow the link from our sidebar. Then search for Tango, the tale of an island dog. There lived once upon a time a wicked prince whose heart and mind were set upon conquering all the countries of the world and on frightening the people. He devastated their countries with fire and sword, and his soldiers trod down the crops in the fields and destroyed the peasants' huts by fire, so that the flames licked the green leaves off the branches and the fruit hung dried up on the singed black trees. Many a poor mother fled, and her naked baby in her arms, behind the still smoking walls of her cottage. But also the soldiers followed her, and when they found her she served as new nourishment to their diabolical enjoyments. Demons could not possibly have done worse things than these soldiers. The prince was of the opinion that all this was right and that it was only the natural course which things ought to take. His power increased day by day. His name was feared by all, and fortune favoured his deeds. He brought enormous wealth home from the conquered towns, and gradually accumulated in his residence riches which could nowhere be equalled. He erected magnificent palaces, churches and halls, and all those who saw these splendid buildings and great treasures exclaimed admiringly, What a mighty prince! But they did not know what endless misery he had brought upon other countries, nor did they hear the sighs and lamentations which rose up from the debris of the destroyed cities. The prince often looked with delight upon his gold and his magnificent buildings, and thought, like the crowd, what a mighty prince! But I must have more, much more. No power on earth must equal mine, far less exceed it. He made war with all his neighbours and defeated them. The conquered kings were chained up with golden fetters to his chariot when he drove through the streets of his city. These kings had to kneel at his and his courtiers' feet when they sat at table and live on the morsels which they left. At last the prince had his own statue erected on the public places and fixed on the royal palaces. Nay, he even wished it to be placed in the churches, on the altars. 
But in this the priests opposed him, saying, Prince, you are mighty indeed. But God's power is much greater than yours. We dare not obey your orders. Well, said the prince, then I will conquer God too. And in his haughtiness and foolish presumption, he ordered a magnificent ship to be constructed with which he could sail through the air. It was gorgeously fitted out and of many colours. Like the tail of a peacock, it was covered with thousands of eyes, but each eye was the barrel of a gun. The prince sat in the centre of the ship and had only to touch a spring in order to make thousands of bullets fly out in all directions while the guns were at once loaded again. Hundreds of eagles were attached to this ship and it rose with the swiftness of an arrow up towards the sun. The earth was soon left far below and looked with its mountains and woods like a cornfield where the plough had made furrows which separated green meadows. Soon it looked only like a map with indistinct lines upon it, and at last it entirely disappeared into the mists and clouds. Higher and higher rose the eagles up into the air. Then God sent one of his numberless angels against the ship. The wicked prince showered thousands of bullets upon him, but they rebounded from his shining wings and fell down like hailstones. One drop of blood, one single drop, came out of the white feathers of the angel's wings and fell upon the ship in which the prince sat, burnt into it, and weighed upon it like thousands of hundred weights, dragging it rapidly down to the earth again. The strong wings of the eagles gave way, the wind roared around the prince's head, and the clouds around. Were they formed by the smoke rising up from the burnt cities? took strange shapes like crabs many, many miles long, which stretched their claws out after him and rose up like enormous rocks from which rolling masses dashed down and became fire-spitting dragons. The prince was lying half-dead in his ship when it sank at last with a terrible shock into the branches of a large tree in the wood. I will conquer God, said the prince. I have sworn it. My will must be done. And he spent seven years in the construction of wonderful ships to sail through the air and had darts cast from the hardest steel to break the walls of heaven with. He gathered warriors from all countries so that many, when they were placed side by side, they covered the space of several miles. They entered the ships, and the prince was approaching his own, when God sent a swarm of gnats, one swarm of little gnats. They buzzed round the prince, and stung his face and hands. Angrily he drew his sword and brandished it, but this only touched the air and did not hit the gnats. Then he ordered his servants to bring costly coverings and wrap him in them, that the gnats might no longer be able to reach him. The servants carried out his orders, but one single gnat had placed itself inside one of the coverings, crept into the prince's ear, and stung him. The place burned like fire, and the poison entered into his blood. 
mad with pain, he tore off the coverings and his clothes too, flinging them far away, and danced about before the eyes of his ferocious soldiers, who now mocked at him the mad prince who wished to make war with God, and was now overcome by a single gnat. And that's the story of the wicked prince. And Bertie says that if you've ever heard a story about a mad scientist who has a dangerous invention that goes against nature, then that's a modern story about hubris. And don't forget, there are loads more stories at storynori.com. And if you're 13 or over, you can join our Facebook group or follow us on Twitter. And if you're not 13 or over, perhaps you have a family member or a teacher who can do this for you, so you can keep up with our latest news. For now, from me, Natasha, bye-bye!